Okay, NASA's spacecraft designed to study a metallic asteroid is set to launch in October. For more on this, I'm joined by Glenn Nagel from the NASA CSIRO Canberra Deep Space Communication Complex. Glenn, good to see you. Thank you. Tell us a bit more about this mission. It sounds extraordinary. Yes, the mission called Psyche going to the asteroid called Psyche. So this is an object in the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter and on the far edge of that asteroid belt. And observations over the years show that it's metal rich. So scientists believe that it could be the core remnant of a planet that was developing in our solar system billions of years ago, but ran out of stuff to actually grow to become a full planet. And then over this last four billion years, other meteorite impacts on the surface have blown the old surface away and just left behind the core of this object. So this will be a first chance to actually look at the core of a planet, something we simply can't do anywhere else in the solar system. Gosh, and what are they hoping to learn from that? What would be uh, the surprises that they could uncover, do you think? Well, right at the moment here on Earth, we can only drill about maybe 10 to 12 kilometres into the Earth's crust, which is, you know, about 40 kilometres thick and you get into the mantle and then you've got to go right down thousands of kilometres to get to the core. So we have no idea really exactly what the core is like. All we can do is sort of speculate through um, seismic studies and so forth. But this is a chance to look directly at how a core of a planet forms because it's the basic building block of an actual planet like Earth or Mars or anywhere else in the solar system. So having something that we've made earlier <laughs> in our solar system is a great way to learn about how planets form. And that's a really important thing, not only understanding the planets of our own solar system, but how planets in other solar systems might form as well. Now, Glenn, while we've got you, I want to ask you about another story uh, that I saw this week, and it's about a star, the 10th brightest star in the night sky. It has a name that I'm not going to be brave enough to, to try and pronounce, but you might. Apparently, it's become 50% brighter. Why? Do we know? Yeah, so this is the star Betelgeuse or Betelgeuse. Um, people know, of course, the Betelgeuse from the movie, but uh, Betelgeuse, quite often, it's a star in the constellation of Orion, so a very prominent constellation in our night sky. It's a red giant star, so it's a star coming towards the end of its life. And astronomers think that we could actually be seeing the death throes of that star before it goes supernova. Now, some astronomers believe it could go supernova in the next 10 years. Some astronomers believe it could be in the next million years or so. So it's an interesting thing to keep an eye out because this star has sort of a brightening and a sort of fading phase every 400 days and then it has other cycles as well. It dimmed a few years ago through a cloud of interstellar dust and gas that blocked our view, which we didn't realise until further study. But now it seems to be really brightening and this is a little more unusual brightening than it normally does. So this could just be another indicator of the final legs of its life. Glenn, also, I have to ask you, we had a discussion a bit earlier in the program about a whistleblower in the US who has very high security clearance and, and seems to have a, have a resume where he'd know what he's talking about. He's suggesting the US is keeping alien spacecraft, remnants of spacecraft, and not telling anyone about it. NASA is saying it doesn't know anything about this. If we had seen alien spacecraft come to Earth, you'd think NASA would know, right? Yeah, so NASA, of course, has been conducting a panel on uh, UFOs or U UAPs, as we refer to them now, and they've studied hundreds and hundreds of these so-called sightings. And they can only sort of, about 5% of them, they can't quite explain, and only because we don't have enough evidence, enough information. So these recent extraordinary claims of alien spacecraft, and this is not the first time it's ever been claimed by a so-called expert or an insider, uh, these extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And if you think, Ash, just the amount of cameras that exist on the planet today, we've all got them in our pockets walking around. We can get uh, extraordinary images of a car crash in action or a plane crashing into a building, but nobody has ever gotten a decent photo of a UFO or an alien. So I think uh, we'll all just sit back and enjoy the fun of hearing about these stories. Yeah, you're right. It's, uh, it's fun to think about. Anyway, Glenn Nagel, really appreciate you making the time for us as always. Thanks so much. Always a pleasure. Thank you.